Where are we going? Ice fishing. Yeah. With Ryan Pugh and Krista Lewis. We have Yahoo. to go to Canadian Tea Raw to get some Coleman stove propane because that's how we heat. That's how we heat. That's how we heat our shelter. And I'm wearing that's my how, new hat. That's how they heat. You should put the hat on. I should put the hat on? Yeah. My mom made me this hat and it's absolutely adorable. Aw. <laughs> it looks so cute on you. <laughs> you look so sweet. Can I take it off now? No. Not you yet. Why are you going to take it off? Because it's your hat and I want to give it back. Are you sure you don't want to wear it? It looks cute on you. All the girls will think you're so pretty. <laughs> I don't do pretty. Handsome? This isn't handsome. Are you sure? 100%. So we have got the Coleman fuel so we can stay warm in the fishing hut, in our fishing hut that we purchased. We did buy a fishing hut. No. No. We did buy the heat though, so that's a bonus. And um, the weather was calling for some flurries and so far it's still a nice clear blue sky. So Sunny. Almost got, like summer. Uh, so far no snow. So it's, uh, it's pretty good all around day. <laughs> Take a look at the fucking window. Hi, <laughs> Corona. Uh, the front's probably better. Yeah, no, there is flurries. Fantastical. Sandwich. Sandwich. Don't eat and drive in a blizzard. And unless you're from Ontario and you know actually how to do it. It's called multitasking. You try it out sometime. It keeps me awake. That's a good sandwich. You also shouldn't talk with your mouth full. It's very rude. So what's going on? You only work the last little. Oh, you're not gonna do it from here? That's no fun. <laughs> you gotta watch Ryan roll this thing right onto the lake. <laughs> oh, Ryan. That's right. We're like we're all over 30, but guess what? Tobogganing never gets old. <laughs> Yeah, if I had a good <laughs> zoom, I'd, I'd get in on that guy. Who eat the fish? They have Geiger counters. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, that's like good advertising for your lake if like Chernobyl signs are floating yeah. around. I don't think you're going anywhere. He'll get going. Just wait a sec. There he goes. Top speed, two. <laughs> <laughs> New land speed record, two. two. <laughs> Hasn't done it since he was two. <laughs> <Doesn't>, yeah. <laughs> well, it's kind of nice it started snowing. Yeah. It hides all the shallow spots so you can fall through the ice later. Oh, it'll be fine. <laughs> so what do you guys take, like, the same spot every time you come out? No, we'll send those guys our spot. Oh, are those guys there? Yeah. Bastards. Yeah. Nice hat. Nice hat. It's you. I like it. No, I was actually surprised because she got she got me to print off the pattern on the internet for, so her mom could knit her the hat. And then when I actually saw the finished product, it was so much better than the picture on the website. Oh yeah. The one on the website looked like flat and like the ears are way too oh, big. It almost looked hat. like a. It almost looked like a. It had like um, bat wings or something. The ears were so I huge. I thought that was store bought. Like, oh yeah, it's really cute. Yeah. No, it's an amazing job. I'm like that is so much better than that picture. Got two more to make I was having second thoughts. My, my <laughs> but it looks like we've the train has come to a halt. So I guess this is the spot. Eh? You can this feel it underfoot. Cap shining. Huh? Drop line here. Many fish farting. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so check it out. Ryan and Krista are avid fisher people. This thing was a hundred bucks off at Canadian Tire, so it probably cost them like $340, $350. Seems like a steal, because really, the structure itself comes together in like a couple of minutes, and then it, it took us an extra couple of minutes to basically anchor it down to the ice so it wouldn't blow away. And that's that, there's your shelter. I mean, you get inside, it can fit like six people, very comfortable because they had a little Coleman stove in there for heat. 
and uh, we drilled four holes or augered out four holes in the ice, which you'll see after this clip's done. And uh, you know, we hung out in the tent for five hours. It was pretty awesome. Like five hours just flies when you're chilling with friends on a lake in a little tent. A little less than five minutes since the recording time. And that is how. Shall I just be stupid and be like, nice corkscrew, Ryan? <laughs> it's an auger, right? <laughs> <laughs> just under 400 bucks with a hut, and it goes together in less than five minutes. Thank you for camping. Yes. Holding her down. I hear water. Look out, fishies. I think we've struck gold. I think fish are about to die. Aquatic gold. Alright. Gonna give us two lines on this side. The girls two lines on this Sweet. other side, and then we can still have up to two lines each. So we'll put some tip-ups outside. But we are now inside the hut. Mm -hmm. I like the little portholes. Yeah. World's worst glory hole. Oh. Yeah. Well, I wanted to show them. Yeah, right on that. Sweet. You should show them our fishies. Mm -hmm. oh. I can see them. Can you see them? Yep. He's flickering oh, in the lens there. Hello, little fish. Stick a gander out the porthole. Outside. In his middle bucket, he got a catfish. Not too bad. She's oh, snowing. Catfish. We had that thing for about ten years. Oh yeah. I'm not. I didn't even. I guess they live a while. It's, yeah. It's oh yeah. Them. They can be like seventy. Years but it is prime yeah, ice they, fishing they weather. Oh, yeah. And they, they're. It's like if these bastards a start TV biting. The bells and are in place. And that nifty little thing. What's that called again? Like uh, hands tip up. In their holes and they the tip up. Fish bites, flag goes whatever, up. Yeah, you and pick them up and you just you pull them no out. No pole required. In the hole and it grabs onto it. So I, I joke, our kitty does the same thing. Hides mm. underneath the chair. So I said, you no, have yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. Exactly. Congratulations. You have snagged a fish. Now remove the tip up and pull like crazy. Old school style, hand over hand, you were saying. Tug of war with a really strong kid. We need to pull the bait out. We're going to put some stink on him. And I will record the stinking process. A little bit of gravy on the center. <laughs> Ooh, he got Take that, you fucker. He got a little yank, too. He's hanging all fucked up like a chicken here. Nah. Smells like shit. Might get a hit. <laughs> All right, Minnow, you know your gosh darn roll. Get down there and get to work. That stuff will travel around pretty, uh, pretty well. So you wouldn't need to dunk all the fishes. You, all the fishes. You wouldn't need to dunk all the minnows. Well, they're bait fish. Yeah, yeah even even the word fishes isn't even proper grammar. <laughs> but uh, you wouldn't have to dunk. Fishes. You wouldn't have to dunk all of them because one would attract fish yeah, to the it area, still right? Yeah, spreads the scent around. You're right. And, so, and what another advantage of it is when the fish does bite it it has that flavor to it, they won't want to let go. If it tastes like blood or... Chicken. They, uh... Yeah. Right on. They'll hang on that much like longer. Fish, fish chicken. It's like that first bite of apple pie, you're like, I'm gonna eat the shit out of this pie. It's good luck to record the bell. Yeah. The bell will A watched bell never hangs. Man, I spent a long time trying to get film of a dad being taken and me catching a fish. I did manage one sequence, Survivor Man style, but it was a perch. You need to like, oh, what's a perch? Nothing. It's small. It is. And it's yummy. makes me feel like less of a man the more of them I catch. <laughs> but no, a lot of ice fishes, they'll, they'll go for numbers. It's not size. They'll catch like, you know, the limit for perch, I think, is like 50, or something. 50 a person. Yeah. You can have a stack of the bastards on the ice and you want to go fillet them all. They're delicious, but that's not why I fish. I don't fish for thinner most of the time so it's like you'd want to get a big gnarly one i want something that's gonna fucking rip some drag out and you know, something you could even stuff give you that little charge which hopefully both of you get to to check mm -hmm. out today something yeah the only thing i've ever caught were a, pit, a perch and a couple of sunfish and a sheep's head 
cool. That's it. Oh, sheep's head. That's awesome. Yeah. The only reason why I know what it was is because I was really pretty. It was opal. Yeah, yeah. And I pulled it out. I'm like, oh my god, that's so pretty. What color is it? That's or what it's called? The fish is called a sheep's, sheep's head? head? It's ugly looking, but it's got a beautiful color. My father goes, oh, it's a sheep's head. I'm like, no, it's not. It's a fish. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like, you're actually, you're actually pulling body parts out. <laughs> What's a fish hut without? Dramatic zoom. A bottle of Canadian. Somebody brought us around and we were very appreciative. It was a very kind man. I'm, big, I'm a big fan of people who bring me beer. But no, it didn't even charge us compliments all the Yeah, really. And hugged the girls too on the way out. Weekend price about eight dollars a bottle. You got something on there? Yeah, it's not big. That's funny. Oh, nice fish, though. He's a nice one. <laughs> Lighter in the water. Yeah. Hey, cool. It's a big one. It's a fish. It's a fish. Yeah. It's a fish. Is a fish. Is a fish. He's a nice size perch. Bad. Not bad at all. Not bad. Picture no. taking time. I knew it was. Oh, you swallowed my man, and I see his tail. Wow, he's <laughs> a greedy fish. Oh. I'm still looking at a picture of him. Does it look big now? Oh, it's really big. <laughs> <laughs> look at the hold on a second. And. Go. It's the brother. Go. It's the brother of the walleye. Little brother, unfortunately. <laughs> One last story before this video ends. Krista tells a story here about uh, how the muskrat got into the fishing hut one time. They were out on the lake. I don't know how a muskrat was underneath the water, but he came up the fishing hole. So I'll just let Krista tell the story. So. Our holes, you could actually see a rim underneath that was water. You could stick your hand under it. So when you go to drop your bait down, you'd swim under there and you'd have to pull them out and make them go down. And the muskrat came right up and he went, he shot underneath in between the layers and he ended up coming at Ryan's hole and going down in his hole. <laughs> so I've like got my feet over the thing and he's like going that way. And I'm like, he's under that, he's under here. And Ryan's like, whoop, he just went down here. And then the next day he came back up in my hole again. Cover it up with well, the. It was the next weekend, wasn't it? No, it was the very next oh, day. Nice yeah. I'm like, this stuff's just not right, man. What the hell? So, how do they survive? I mean, if muskrats trapped under the ice like that, do they gotta wait for somebody to dig a hole? Well, they had to get through a, a, either an air hole or something near shore. Yeah, he probably found there. a spot. So, there you are. Thanks for watching the video on our little Saturday outing. The date was January 28th. Big thanks to Ryan and Krista for the invite. And uh, we'll definitely be doing it again sometime before the season is out. And thank you, Terry, for the beer. It was scrumptious. Hey.